It's a worldwide phenomenon. PlayStation, YouTube and Jackass have given rise to a new breed of kid who struggles to differentiate between risk and stupidity. <laughs> Clive Neeson, a physicist by day, is the creator of the film Last Paradise. When the outdoors was regarded as the ultimate playground and a kid's imagination was the roadmap for fun. There is a school of thought that the pendulum has swung too far and bubble wrap is smothering young kids and killing young men. The outdoors has always been a place where boys have found manhood for generations. And I fear today that without that process, they're more inclined to, to look for other forms of initiation, uh, be it hooning or binge drinking or so on. If you overprotect them as kids, they don't explore their boundaries and learn the skills which they'll need to protect themselves as adults. So you, you have this perpetuating problem whereby uh, they have to be protected through life and hence the nanny state and the, the degree of protection we have now. But has parental protection grown out of proportion and turn to paranoia. I don't see outdoor recreation as being risky at all. The characters of Last Paradise effectively were the pioneers of extreme sports. It may seem very dangerous, but in fact, it's safe because you learn the skills to cope with it. And that's what kids are not learning today. They're not learning the skills to be able to navigate, explore, and recreate in the wilderness. You've got to bite the dust now and then to learn. Like a crash I had in the Sahara Desert, I smacked full on into a rock. Now, I remember recalling those times as a child when I'd crashed my trolley and the things I learned and how to relax and just turn your head a wee bit and, and adjust so that you're not going to, well, you're going to minimise the impact. According to Gurney, the bubble wrap brigade have taken their toll. Now, the races that are still out there are generally sanitised, you know, they've all had all the sharp corners bubble wrapped and they've had all the danger fenced off and so we've, I'm generalising here but we're breeding a competitor who is stupid, who doesn't know how to manage risk, doesn't know how to recognise it and then take the appropriate action. If the objective of life is to survive then I'd say to those parents teach the kids the skills, let them find their boundaries in the outdoors without those skills they're not equipped for life because in business and in the physical world, you're going to need everything you learned as a kid. And as you know, it's a lot easier to learn these when you're young. Most of the characters you see in Last Paradise as kids played in the wilderness because inside was a place of quiet and a place of rules. And so to gain their comfort zone, their happy space, if you like, they played outside. Today, of course, you have the inverse of that, where basically children are given the free reign inside and so um, outside is, is more of an alien place. The irony is there are fewer accidents out here than there are in the confines of the kindy. Let them get dirty, let them eat dirt, let them go outside and play. Take the damn screens off them. One of the reasons why we played outside as kids is because we didn't have television. Uh, our entertainment was self-made, if you like. We had to explore and discover. We didn't have the toys. We didn't have the passive forms of entertainment that you have today. The great lure for kids in playing inside is electronic technology. And there's a misconception that by playing with technology, they're going to become designers of technology. When in fact, what they're becoming is consumers of electronic technology. Technology is designed using calculus, algebra, solid state physics, and material science. And all of those are best formulated on paper, in the written word. The keyboards don't even have the Greek alphabet. I really made Last Paradise to show people the beauty of the wilderness, and particularly the necessity to have kids playing out in the wilderness when they're very young, to form that relationship with the wilderness that would become a lifetime thing. There is so much that comes out of this issue of children not playing in the wilderness today. Cultural, environmental, and vocational issues are related to how kids play in the wilderness. Our playgrounds shape our lives, and our lives shape the playgrounds of the next generation. And so our wilderness is caught in that spiral because the protectors of tomorrow's wilderness are the kids who play in it today.
We have so much problems these days with obesity and getting people to exercise. Unfortunately, today, exercise has become loathsome or burdensome. It should never be that way. You'll notice the characters in Last Paradise, they play out. They don't work out. And that's the big difference. I mean, working out, just the words themselves, who wants to do that? So you can maintain lifelong fitness simply by playing out and not working out. But the essence is that joy when you're doing it, that joy associated with playing in the wilderness. And you can only learn that when you're very young because you get a comfort about the wilderness. If it seems an alien place to you, then I don't think you'll ever grasp that. And, uh, and Last Paradise is used in Australia and USA to address these issues, both at universities and to communities. They are very conscious of this issue. And that culture of innovation started with our great physicists and engineers by their time in the wilderness, because they observed the night sky, which we don't today. This is what kids need to find, is that sense of wonder that drove our early scientists. Without that, uh, we don't really have a future as an innovative nation. Do you feel for the kids these days? I think kids these days are very happy in what they're doing. What they don't know is perhaps what they're missing out on. That dream, and you'll see in Last Paradise, all the characters had a dream when they were kids. And their life was the unfolding of that. So they had meaning to their life. And they formulated that dream in the great outdoors. And that's what drove them on, their aspirations. And it led to healthy aspirations. It's really about your relationship with the wilderness. This is what kids are missing today. So we need to make the wilderness the happy place for kids rather than doors. And I think the best way to do that for parents is to take them camping at a very young age and to make sure that that is the happiest time of their lives.